a new day. A new day presented to you in all the glory. The sun rises, the sun sets. And in this space and time of a new day, what are your choices for this day? And we understand that not all days feel vibrant and vivacious and passionate. Not all days one can see the world through the eyes of, we want to say, wonderment. So often it is difficult for ones to move through their day, to experiencing, to experience their day experiencing the ups and downs, the highs, the lows, the ins and outs, the victory, the blows, if you will. When all things line up, when it feels like the whole world is in wonderment, where passions are abound, and creativity is flowing, and movement going forward, all things lining up in the right order, in the right timing. And then, a little down the road, all things start to slow down and there's a shift. Something happens. Something happens that the world doesn't seem as fresh as it once did. Almost as though dark skies cloud over a brilliant sunny day and do not keep moving to allow the sun to shine once again. So often it feels like that, and it feels like there are periods of time where all things feel short-lived, and most feel that happiness is short-lived. Most feel contentment and joy and ease and peacefulness is short-lived. Fragments of a little, a little reminder to let you know that happiness is there. But most feel they fall upon the other side of things where days feel heavy and burdened, stressful, time in, time out, relationships frustrated, communication not flowing. And so ones move forward feeling less than their vibrant, vivacious, passionate self. So a new day, how do you wish to feel this day? And ones will challenge and say, well, I do not wish to feel like this. It's not a choice how I'm feeling. Do you know what my life is? Do you know what I have lived through? Do you know what I have to live through? Do you know who just left? Do you know who just came back? Do you have any idea my life? And you're going to tell me it is a choice on how I feel about it. And we will say yes. We are going to share with you it is your choice in how you feel about it. So many times, it starts to become the beat of the walk. So many times when something arises that does not feel good, anything opposite to joy and happiness, the burdens of life, the adversities, etc., It feels like it is very easy to carry for a long while. Ones tend to feel that happiness isn't carried for any duration of time, for it doesn't take long for life experience to show the opposite of, the contrast of. Why does it feel so much more natural, so much, much more normal, if you will, to allow the burdens of life, the emotions that are created, 
placing down happiness, joy, contentment and ease. We share that one has to be placed down in order for the contrast. So if one is angry, they must place it down to find peacefulness. If one is joyful, they must place down the joy to find the resentfulness or name it what you will, anything opposite to the contrast of. It is very difficult to hold the burdens of life and feel any sense of passion at all. It is very difficult to move forward in your dreams, wishes and desires when one is so disheartened and disappointed. It is difficult for ones to feel carefree the sense that all things are lining up when it feels like a bomb has just been dropped on someone's personal affairs. So the contrast of life, what is the choice? The choice is how you feel about any one thing for any length of time. We have shared that, that in an experience the same experience for two people, many people. Some may become agitated and frustrated at the experience and another may become enlightened, feeling full and feeling grand that the experience happened. Isn't it fascinating that you truly do choose in how to respond or to react to a life we will say event, situation, experience. Now, we want to be mindful here and very clear that when something is sad, it is sad. There are moments in time that something, if you were to present joy to the event, it would look absurd. Ones would not ever understand. It is how long you wish to carry it for. And there is a grieving period, absolutely a grieving period. In this segment of time, when one is grieving over loss, and loss could be a number of things, hundreds of thousands of things to feel the sense of loss. A loved one transitioning into the heavens loss of financial gain, loss of a marriage, ones feeling lost when their little ones have grown and now they are living on their own, the empty house, and others feel complete joy in it, yeah? So when there is a sense of loss, and again, loss on the scale of 1 to 10, from extreme tragedy to something mild. But to someone, something mild could be extreme tragedy. So not everyone is on the same scale as the depth of loss one would feel. Isn't that fascinating? So that would also truly be a choice, would it not? There are some who have losses in life and they find a space relatively quickly, if you will, to pick up, dust themselves off and truly start again. There are ones that just continue life in their almost not even missing a beat. And there are others who feel the loss of something and they carry it for decades. Is that not fascinating? And again, depending on what the loss is, but not really. But not really, because one would choose the depth of. A personal item that is lost, say a watch, that is very, very meaningful to one, be a, a jewelry, an item of jewelry. 
and it is lost. One could feel so devastated about it and devastated, truly grieving over the loss of an item, an object, because it has sentimental holdings. Another, yes, it has sentimental holdings, but turns it around quickly because it is gone. And instead of hanging on to the upset that it's gone, they will say, well, I guess it was time for a new watch. And they go out and they purchase a brand new watch. They sort of take it in stride where someone else would not take it in stride. And there isn't a right or a wrong for every soul walks to the beat of their own drum. And when it comes to grieving, grieving is truly to the beat of one's own heart. Grieving is on its own time. Grieving should not be rushed. It should be understood that there is a healing process so in loss, it is natural that one would experience the sense of grieving, naturally so. And there isn't a time frame for grieving. But it does not mean that while your heart is healing, while your mind is healing, your body is healing, your soul is healing, that there isn't a space of, we want to say connection because you always have connection to the universe, divine, God, name it what you will, Mother Earth. Connection to your inner self. If you do not believe in any, any sort of, we want, don't want to say higher power, but something outside of you, that is, that is fine. So th think of the connection within yourself, your inner light. Connect with your inner light. So when ones are grieving, it is a time of great healing. It is a time of, we'll say, reflection, healing, and even honoring one's body, mind, heart, and soul. And it is true, if one does not grieve, we want to say, in a healthy way, all kinds of havoc can come from that. If it is just covered up and buried, sort of the whole, oh, light and love, fluffy words, covering it up, sugarcoating it, there will be a time that it does surface because it's held within and the body, the mind, the heart and the soul want to release it. So even if one isn't experiencing grieving or they're rushing the grieving process, so many times ones will lose a loved one and well-meaning people around them will say, come on, you have life to live, you've, 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 grieved long enough. It's time to. And then they have a list of things that one should do. It's time to clean out the closet. It's time to, to move along. It's time to meet someone new. It's time to fill it in, fill it in. Well-meaning people wanting someone who is in the depths of grieving or the grieving is lingering, wanting to speed it up for the other. Come on, Come on, let's, let's get up. And it is understood why a well-meaning, beautiful soul would want to help along the one that is grieving. But truly, like forgiveness and compassion, no one can make you do it. No one can make you do it. It's on your own time, the beat of your own heart. But in that dialogue, we do wish to share 
that while one is grieving, to find the space to truly nurture oneself. Many times grieving, if carried a long duration, it be really becomes havoc on one's body, mind, heart, and soul. It starts to break everything down. So be mindful that when you are grieving, allow the space to feel the emotions of, but be mindful to nourish oneself in the process of healing because you want the process of healing to, uh, to be, to be in all its fullness. If one starts to scold themselves for the continued grieving, all that is doing is scolding oneself. And we have shared time and time and time and time and time again, unkind words truly create so much havoc upon one's soul if one believes it. And so often in the grieving process, if it feels like it is taking too long, let us say, and one's other well-meaning ones are saying, oh, hurry it up, life is to be lived. And then the one that is feeling the grief, the one that is feeling the emotions and deep emotions deep, powerful emotions. They start scolding themselves. Oh, I should do better. I, I knew I would fill it in. I, I knew I couldn't do this. I knew I, I don't have the strength. And, I, and they tr start to beat upon oneself. And so this dialogue is a gentle reminder that any emotion you are feeling any emotion, to remind yourself not to beat upon yourself for feeling the emotion, except that you are feeling it. If something is sad to you, it is sad to you. If something is joyous to you, it is joyous to you. And it is true, what is joyous to one is not joyous to another. We mentioned the roller coaster ride. To some, an absolute terrifying experience, and to another, an experience that is so exciting, they want to do it all over again just for the rush of it. So, two people will not have the same emotions. They all experience the same emotions, but they will not always place the same emotions upon the same experience. This is powerful to understand. For if one can get over loss easily, it would be understood that they should still show compassion to one that has having, is having trouble moving on from any kind of loss. Compassion, kindness, forgiveness, love, Higher consciousness. Higher consciousness brings love to the healing. Healing is love. But when ones can really cut themselves some slack and pat themselves on the back for, for, for feeling any one thing truly, for experiencing life, if one can acknowledge the feeling, allow it to be, and then soothe their soul about it, they are far, far, far well ahead in their travel than one that notices the feeling and scolds himself about it. Ponder that. So one has found a place to, of anger, and anger it is, it is lingering. It keeps going day in, day out, for they do not see the change. Nothing has changed to give them any sense of relief. So they continue to be angry day after day. 
If ones can just recognize the feeling of, allow the space to be angry, acknowledging it, almost witnessing it, if you will, and then being gentle with it. Now, it is difficult to be gentle when you feel anger. But you do not have to condemn endlessly for what has happened that caused the anger. You do not have to beat upon oneself for holding the anger. You do not have to beat upon the other or others, whatever the experience was to bring forth the feeling of anger. For every time you hold on to, so you can't let go of what has happened, what, is, what the words were, what took place. We're speaking about anger, resentment, frustration, jealousy, feeling less than, feeling unworthy. When one condemns the whole thing, They are truly shackling their ankles in place. There will be no movement. So if one can look at the situation, the experience, with love, compassion, kindness, and forgiveness, this is where freedom comes in. This is where the shackles are removed. And it is true, if it is not so extreme, there will be a day that one perhaps will laugh about it. So if you even place that in the forefront, one day I will laugh about it. We are sharing with you and how we started our dialogue. A new day presented to you. What if you chose to laugh about it today? Would that not free you up for a lengthy journey until the laughter did come? What if what you feel one day I'll laugh about this? What if you made that this day? Now again, we are removing grieving from this. Because when ones are grieving, the chances of them laughing at it at any time is removed. We are speaking about everyday experiences that does cause one to become, again, opposite to joy. Holding on to it, the beat of the drum. And then always sharing the story. It becomes a story. The event or the circumstance becomes a story and one talks about it over and over and over and over to ones that they meet, ones that will listen to care, well-meaning, caring, loved ones. And it is good to speak about things if you feel guided to. But every time you bring it to surface, whether in thought or in words, You are beating the drum of the emotion because the moment you start to speak about something that is truly upset you, hurt you perhaps, deeply hurt you. And so you're talking to a friend and you haven't talked to them in months. And they say, how are you doing? Well, not so good. Months back and then the story begins. So even though you are conveying what has happened for you to feel the way you are, you have brought forth the story of. And every time you bring back the story of, whether it's in thought or words, you are beating the drum of the emotion, the intense emotion that was felt the moment that it was felt when it happened. When you can place down the story, and we want to be gentle because it is hard to do. Because if the story is hung on long enough, it becomes the personality. 
Oh yeah, that one. Well, they're angry because years ago their spouse left them and so on and this, then they, they share the story as to why this one is angry. So it is all understood why one would be angry. But when it becomes your, we want to say personality, then it is truly a story, not just for oneself, but for others. So we would share to place that book down, that story down, and find a new story, a new day, a new chapter, pages turn. And we know it is not an easy, we want to say, task to let go of something that is so hurtful to let go of unkind words, to let go of, we'll say, business loss. Name it. There's hundreds of thousands of reasons. Hundreds of thousands of reasons to feel something other than happiness. But when you feel that you are caring this, or when you are mindful, higher consciousness allows one to be mindful of how long they are caring an emotion for. How long is the story going to be told? And every time the story is told, it is truly like, we want to say it, it is, it is like having, when something happens, this is a metaphor, but it makes sense. So let us say something has come along and you have a, there's, there's a wound, a physical wound, let's say, on your leg. And it is stitched up and it will take some time to heal, depending on how deep the wound is, if it's a surface wound or a deep wound, depending how many stitches, etc., etc. So depending on, it's a metaphor, depending on how long or how one feels the depth of the emotion is. So think of the depth of the wound, but it is a physical wound. And when emotions are concerned, it is an emotional wound. So it takes time to heal and after the healing process ones are normally left with a, 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 a physical scar something that is noticed and oftentimes even after all the healing and all things are back to normal they are left with the scar and it doesn't take long if someone sort of touches that area, touches the, the scar, one will jump because they, they understand that it, it was painful at one time. So they almost protect it, if you will. Holding emotions for a long time, even with the healing taking place, when one puts down the story, and changes the story, they start to see the world very differently. They're not reading the same story. They're not bringing the old story to life. They're creating a new story. So they've created their new story, feeling much better than the previous story. And someone comes along and hands them the pages again and says, oh, how are you doing? Because I heard that. And then they go back to the story. Well, the one that has, has now a new story will certainly feel the emotions of the old story. So it is best. Ones need time for healing. Allow time for healing in the understanding that once healing has occurred or to speed up the healing one would nurture themselves and nurturing oneself would be to do one's best not to repeat the story in words and thoughts 
keeping it alive, beating the drum of it. So, with that, we will conclude this segment. In a nutshell, today is a new day, filled of great promise and a blank page for ones to create. What words do you want to create today to put on this brand new page? A new day is like receiving a book with blank pages and getting to write your story. What will be written today? What do you wish to write today? How do you wish to feel today? Really, really, really good. There is great love for you.